So this is what I woke up to this morning. I'm at BLM land just south of Lake Havasu called Standard Wash or thereabouts. Pretty amazing. Hey everyone, Chris here. Here's another quick video that I want to talk about where I'm at. Uh, I'm in Lake Havasu now, and Lake Havasu is pretty cool. But it's a dense city, and there's no way I could stay in the city. It's just the way it's engineered, the way it's set up, just it's too much. So luckily there is BLM land on both the north and the south end of it. And I'm in a BLM area called Standard Wash, which is just maybe a mile or two. It's not far from the city limits on the south side. And that's allowed me to take my scooter into town from this BLM location that I'm at. And I didn't actually get here until it was dark last night. And so I got here not realizing kind of how spectacular the scenery was. So this morning I got up, walked out, and there was this spectacular scenery outside. So I got a bunch of footage of, of the area this morning. And then some more, I got some more footage of what the area was like this evening when I got back to, to the RV. So the, the good thing is that I was able to take my scooter into town. Now, my scooter is a 150cc scooter and it can get up to about 60 miles an hour when you know the conditions are, are, are right. And I was a little bit nervous because the I-95 that's just connected to this BLM stretch right here is rated for 65 and there are a lot of cars charging up and down it. But fortunately, it changes to 55 and then sooner after that 45 as the city limit, you go get into the city limit. So I braved it and I got on and I was able to charge down there. There's actually um, another stretch of, of public land called a, a public trust land or something like that. And I was watching a video by Hobotech and he talks about it and how you can get a permit and stay on that. And that's even closer. So I don't know if that's something because I'm going to be here a short amount of time that I want to investigate. But I had thought about going to Craggy Wash because in the Lake Havasu area, Craggy Wash is really the well-known BLM location. And that's just north of the city. But when I was looking at it, it's farther north and it was going to be a much kind of a more arduous trip on my scooter to get there. So my plan is to actually go to Craggy Wash and spend a day there over the weekend just so I can say that I've done it. And I think that should be really cool. So uh, on Friday, I'm taking the RV back into town because I'm planning on doing an exploration video of the London Bridge, which is super interesting. I really didn't know about it, but that is the most interesting thing about Lake Havasu. And I'm also picking up a couple of packages that should be in on Friday. And one of those has to do with audio equipment. So I'm improving my audio equipment for my videos. I'm getting a new lavalier mic. And this is a lavalier mic, what I have on, attached to me right now. And that is then connected to the, to the camera. And that just creates better audio. Better audio than if I were using the camera's built-in microphone. The built-in microphone is really susceptible to wind noise, and that's been something that has been frustrating to me when I've been out and there's been wind. And like today, it was super windy. So there's no way I could have actually done anything outside with the cameras just using the built-in audio because there's so much wind noise. But what I'm getting is I'm getting a new lavalier mic, and you would say, well, why not just use this lavalier mic? And this one, when I got it, I didn't realize that the cord, the, K, the cord for it is enormously long. So if I wanted to do an interview 30 feet away from my camera, I could use this. But it's just too unwieldy to take with me and try and connect to the camera. So I've got a new lavalier mic, and I also got a couple of these little wind muffs that are designed for it that should greatly reduce wind noise. I'm also getting an external digital audio recorder that will allow me to record to that, and then I can composite that audio 
onto the videos and Final Cut Pro can swap those files out in a pretty much automatic way. So that's going to be cool. So I went into town today with the scooter and I ran some errands. I went to the gym. I found a water station. There's a really cool water filling station here in town. So this is pretty awesome. I've driven into Lake Havasu and I found this place that is like a water dispensary. So it was just around the corner from my gym and kind of right in the heart of everything down there. So I'm going to go fill up water there on Friday. And then after that, my plan is to go up to Craggy Wash and spend a day or so, a day or two up in Craggy Wash so I can say I've done Craggy Wash. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. One of the things that I'm planning on ramping up and doing more of are these exploring videos and to really get into the art and science of, of doing really good exploration videos. And that's something I've wanted to do for a long time. One of the things that I've wanted to do is really get out and explore the world in a way that I really didn't do when I was younger. And that is going to be kind of a whole separate video that I need to do, sort of a human interest thing. Most uh, people that are watching this channel don't really know me apart from the first video where I talked about the fact that I've struggled with anxiety and depression during the course of my life. And I've got a particularly interesting backstory, I think, that deals with that. And the way that it impacts this traveling thing and this nomadic thing for me is the fact that uh, when I was younger, I had so much anxiety that it made traveling and exploring the world very difficult. When I would go out on trips with friends, I ended up having such bad anxiety uh, and stress that I could never enjoy anything. I went to, to Yellowstone with some friends when I was in my early mid thirties and it was just no fun because my, my stress levels and my anxiety were just awful. I just laid in the back of the car and I couldn't do anything because I was just overridden with anxiety. Other trips like that, I'm at a place in my life now where I can do that, where anxiety that I do, that I do have now tends to be more manageable. So this is something that is a positive thing for me and I've wanted to get out and explore that. And exploring the London Bridge is just one aspect of that. And I went down there on the day that I got here and just did a quick, ran down there, looked at it, looked in the area, um, got a sandwich at a cute little shop down there. So th those are the things that I need to do on Friday. And I'm taking the RV back in town because then I'm going to go up to Craggy Wash up north. Right after that, I'm planning on leaving the area and going down to Yuma. And then from Yuna, Yuma, I'm going to go over to Phoenix and try and explore as much as I can on the way over there. There are some specific things over in the Phoenix area that, that look really interesting that I need to and I want to explore. So yeah, I can definitely see why people flock down to this area because while much of the country has been having hellish winter weather, it's been relatively mild down here. Thanks for watching.